Hey, Zach Tank from ZachTank.com. Um, it's me, Tasha Rain, wearing casual dress and showing my cleavage for you. Um, I'm so excited about doing this interview with you for your website. So, ZachTank.com and Real Zach Tank on YouTube. That is so cool that you're creating content and that you have joined the industry in that way. I think that that's just amazing. And thank you for supporting my website for all of these years. It means so much to me and um, just doing this custom brought me a lot of joy today. My undergraduate degree is in Women's Studies, which was formerly known as Gender Studies. Um, it's actually about race and sex and gender, race and gender, um, and their intersectionality with one another. Uh, race and gender are intertwined. So when we talk about race, we're simultaneously talking about gender and vice versa. Um, I, I did that undergraduate degree at UCLA, my alma mater, and also my family's alma mater. My mom went there. My sister went there and I was very, very proud and am proud to have graduated from UCLA. So I did that while I was simultaneously performing in the adult business. And um, years later, after I had built a brand and performed for many years, I chose to go back to school because I do love to learn. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily love uh, doing homework. But I do love to learn, I love intellectual discussion. So I went back and I went to USC, which was my ultimate dream school, uh, University of Southern California. It was my actual first choice school that I did not get into for my undergrad, but I did get into for my graduate degree. And I got my master's degree in specialized journalism from Annenberg, which is just kind of a fancy word for uh, writing. <laughs> so all types of writing. A lot of people go into uh, journalistic writing. I think I learned, I know I, during my time at USC Annenberg, I learned that my writing really had more to do with, um, with writing and less about journalism, you know? So I'm not to say I'm opposed to investigative journalism, but I just prefer creative writing. Currently I'm working on a nonfiction memoir so stay tuned for that i'm excited for everybody to you know to read my book um that's a really it's a big project and i feel like i have training for it so something i've been wanting to do for a really long time accolades oh that's a tough one right because i feel like a i have a lot and b i can't remember all of them so some of my accolades that I'm most proud about would be one, I've done a lot of advocacy work for performers in the adult business um, by serving as the chairperson for the Adult Performer Advocacy Committee and trying to make some big changes around consent on adult film sets. Um, another accolade that is random was that I was um, on a television show, Laguna Beach, <laughs> season three when I was uh, just in high school. I won best website, best porn star website of the year um, for TashaRain.com at the AVN Awards, which I am so proud of. My only AVN trophy. I've been nominated many times, but that is the one that I won. And I'm so grateful for that. I think it was just so cool. Um, I've been nominated by Xbiz for many awards, but one that I'm most excited about was uh, Performer of the Year. That's like a huge honor to be nominated for. There's just so much competition. And I am proud of the content that I've curated on my OnlyFans. The list goes on. There's been many great opportunities and um, the adult industry has definitely enabled me to be creative, reach goals, and currently working on my memoir. So yeah, that's definitely, those are definitely some of my accolades that I'm proud of. I have 
oh, one dog named Luca. He's our newest addition. He's a French bulldog, um, Merle in color. Uh, it's very like speckly gray and blue, really pretty. Um, I have a white French bulldog named Snow White and she is vicious, so vicious that I had to get rid of my two other dogs, Cinderella and Bambi, and rehome them to my mom. So they're not really gone, but they're no longer in this house. Uh, makes me sad, but I had to make a tough choice. I have two pot-bellied pigs, Quinn and Tim. Uh, Quinn used to be a part of Harley and Quinn. Miss Harley passed away recently. Um, tried to tried to stop that from happening, and unfortunately, I just didn't realize how serious it was. And she she did pass, um, which is so sad. But Tim and Quinn are thriving in their pig pen. Uh, they have Michelangelo, a turtle that lives in the pond next door to them. Um, I have a bearded dragon named Pascal and five chickens who I've only named one Betty White because I am not the best chicken owner in that I let them out sometimes when they go out they get killed by predators so I no longer name them because I just don't want that kind of stress and pressure those are all my animals I mean I have just a handful I was recently in a movie called good boys I just had cameo in it and it was a really freaking cool out in theaters and I played myself I played the mom in a stepmom in a porno with one of the the directors of the movie he put himself in there um they told me it was like a small movie it wasn't a small movie it was everywhere it was like a big deal and I did kind of find it a little bit peculiar that they they misled me about what the role was but um good boys and um i was in a movie recently called death rider and the house of vampires which was really really neat um i played like a virgin <laughs> on a horse i was like the tool used by the vampires to get get in or by the captor to get into the vampire's den they sacrificed me and then i became a vampire in the end and showed off my teeth see so i'd like to do more i'd like to do more that would be really neat yeah it was definitely my first introduction into entertainment and being in front of a camera i thought it was really um it was alluring when I was 17 years old to be on television on MTV, following the footsteps of a big stars like Lauren Conrad and Kristen Cavallari. Our season never really got to that type of fame, but just kind of filming for it and seeing myself on screen on a television show, with plenty of words and dialogue. I mean, we got paid like nothing to do it. So that is like the biggest downfall. I'm actually happy I didn't get that season didn't get a lot of attention because I did not look my best self look like my best self sorry <laughs> and that's just because I was young and I was also insecure about my looks so I was like wearing so much makeup and just trying so hard and mm -mm. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite um, appearance in front of a screen that is for darn sure another detail of that show yeah, it was just my first experience with any sort of fame and it was something that was unique but to me it seemed normal because it happened to me and my friends and now if we really want to we can go back and <laughs> watch season three of laguna beach i don't know if i will but maybe when i have kids we will watch it together ah a socialite i mean <laughs> i definitely am social uh and i live in la so enjoy that aspect of my life lately it has been less because i am six months pregnant so um i mostly stay inside <laughs> but i've enjoyed going to parties and uh traveling and being a social butterfly in my youth it was definitely a highlight of my life oh my gosh i love this question because i feel like i don't really talk about it enough um i had an amazing interview on cnn 
couple years back and I was actually at USC during that time getting my master's degree in specialized journalism in a class for broadcast journalism that was focusing in on basically being the other side of that interview. So instead of being the subject being interviewed, the interviewer. So it was actually, I had been studying the craft and doing that interview at that time in my life was just perfect. Um, because it was like I had been studying this except on the opposite end, which actually made being an interviewee on a national television news show just so much easier. Like I felt like it was something I did every day. That is how I felt. I was like, oh, I've got this. Cause I had been practicing the other side of that um, in real time. That was so cool. And I felt like I, it made a difference at the time. I was doing um, consent work and advocacy work to try to like spread the word about consent to fraternities and make it cool. And I really felt like it fueled a lot of attention to the topic. Uh, no, I was not friends with Lisa Ling before I met her. And um, I only met her that one day on set. Uh, they rented, the show actually had rented, I think they had rented me an Airbnb to sleep in because I was staying out at my grandma's house in Apple Valley, California, my home had been evacuated for the fires. We have fires here all the time in Southern California. We needed a place to shoot. So they rented an Airbnb for me to sleep at. Lisa Lane came the next day. We did an interview and it was fine. I don't have like a ton of highlights from that interview and I don't even think it, I didn't think it got that much attention, but I know that that segment was pretty like porn negative and I felt like I was really, kind of told it was going to be a positive thing. So I just felt like what I was told that the piece was gonna look like was very different than what it ended up looking like, which is kind of like journalism 101. So I learned my lesson and I did my best. Um, nothing really to talk about there. Sorry. Oh my gosh. It was so cool. I stayed in a bed and breakfast that was in um, a library bookshelf type of hostel. So there were like, tons of bunk beds and books lining the bunk beds. I think it was called like the book and bed hostel in Japan. And um, I got to go to just like fun, kind of stereotypical Japanese stores, like nail art salons that were just like really funky and crazy, tiny owl hedgehog holding cafes, um, their version of Hooters. Like I had so much fun and just Nikki Benz and I went, I went with her actually. I tagged along on her trip and um, I would go back to Japan 10 out of 10 for my, I believe my third time. Anytime I would go there. It's so cool. Love how small and pink and cute everything is. Um, <laughs> I loved my experience at the Playboy Mansion. I don't know if you guys have seen that new Secrets of the Playboy Mansion documentary out, but it's definitely terrifying. I watched one episode and like couldn't bear to watch any more of it. I had a great time. I loved Hef. I loved taking photos. I loved the girls. Nothing bad to say personally, other than I did get kicked out for shooting hardcore content and that broke my heart. And oh my God, heck yeah. I've been wanting to do that haven't had the opportunity. My The site that I was selling them on got hacked <laughs> somehow. Um, so other people have been asking and I haven't been able to provide because the site got hacked and I don't know if I really wanna open that one again because I didn't like absolutely love the graphics. The first one, the ones I had, I absolutely loved. I thought they were so cool. I probably have some like in a storage locker left over and I love them. I would do that again. Um, I would absolutely totally do that. I just have so much on my plate. Oh, that's such a hard question. I have no idea. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Zach. I'm so proud of ZachTank.com. And that's it. Thanks so much for this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this was so much fun. I hope you enjoy my interview and a little bonus time. <laughs> Love you. Bye.